Hi everyone, this is Planet Wayne with my first ever Minecraft video. This quick guide is to explain the multipulse feature and the programmable Rednet controller that's included in the Mine Factory Reloaded mod. I've been using this as part of the Attack of the B-Team mod pack and this tutorial came about after trying to simplify some programming logic I've been using on another project. Now what you can see in front of me here is the actual uh, controller. It's a simple circuit that I've got set up literally um, has a controller, a Rednet historian, um, Rednet cable that is connected to the back of the controller or to the right hand side of the controller uh, with two channels on this side, the orange channel and the white channel and two lamps um, that get powered from those connections there. On the left hand side um, is a button again this is on the white channel and there's another historian there uh, with another lamp at the end there and again that's connected this time on the left hand side looking at it from the front um, all on the white channel. Okay so if I right click on the controller we can see here that we've got the multipulse function selected. Um, it's a basic controller I've not added any expansion cards or anything so we're in slot one of six which is the default number of programming slots that you have on one of these things and we've got two sets of values here on the left hand side the values to set up the multipulse and the right hand side is what to actually do with its output. So if we go through these on the left first uh, we've got I which is the first value I've got that set to a constant value here of 15. Now from what I can tell this is the output intensity of the signal or pulse that gets generated. 15 being the number of redstone blocks that that uh, signal can travel. So we can drop it down to say 10 and only have it tra uh, travel 10 blocks, um, down to 5 blocks or, or whatever it is that you want to do from there. You can actually go higher than 15 but kind of pointless with redstone because the maximum signal strength that that will uh, travel is typically only 15 blocks anyway. The next one, CLK or uh, start clock, is uh, set to an IO line on the left hand face and is on the white channel. So if we just come back out to our circuit here, you can see the left hand face of the controller goes into the back of this button which has been set up on here on the white hand channel. So in other words, the thing that's going to start this process off is me pressing the button on that left hand channel there. The next value CNT that we've got here is the counter. Um, now again that's set to a constant value. Um, and in this instance set to 5. So for every time we get a pulse on the input we'll get 5 pulses on the output. The next two are for the timing of the pulse. So we've got timer high and timer low. These reflect how long the output pulse stays at that level. So when it outputs a pulse and it's high it'll stay there for a count of 3 uh, and then it'll swap to a count of 3 for the low part of the pulse and then repeat the process for the number of times that you've told it to um, create a pulse for. And we'll show you that on the uh, historian when we come to actually press the button a few times on this and show you what it's doing. On the right hand side here there's two settings. Q is the actual output um, and in this instance it's on an IO channel on the right hand face and that's on the white line or white channel. Um, and then there's DN which is uh, from what I can tell is done or completed. Um, so this gets illuminated or this gets set a signal when it's actually finished doing the number of ta uh, pulses that you've asked it to uh, create there. And again that's set to an IO line on the right hand side and that's on the orange channel. And again if we come back here we can see there we've just got the two lamps set up white for um, this bottom lamp here and orange which is currently on set to uh, illuminate this one here. Okay so those are the parameters. Um, all that's left to do now is if you just keep an eye on this historian over here which is on the input pulse and this one over here as well as the redstone lamps that are going on there uh, on the output channel. If you remember we've got it set up to do five pulses uh, with a delay of uh, three between each of the um, high low sections of the pulse. So if I click on that button if you just keep an eye on those graphs you'll see exactly what we've got going on. There's our input pulse and there on the right hand side is our five equally spaced output pulses and that was reflected again in the lighting combination there so effectively we made that light flash five times 
for every one press of that button and it told us that it finished by illuminating this light here. I'll just do that again. Simple input pulse, five output pulses, and there you go. So if we go in and alter some of these parameters on here, simplest one to check, if I turn this um, counter value down here, or sorry, turn it up at the moment, um, change it to 10, and do it again. One input pulse, 10 output pulses. Again, all equally spaced at this point in time. Okay, so if we go and alter some of these other values, if I alter this T low value now and increase on that one, this is going to increase the amount of time between actual pulses. So if we stick that up to 20, uh, just come back out and press the button, you can see now that the distance between or the time between each of these pulses is a lot longer than it was before and that's reflected again in the output pulse that we've got going on here. So that's a simple way just to make the pulses actually last a lot longer. Now we could do this the other way around. If we go back into here and I take this value um, up to 20, here we go, and bring this one back down to uh, 3, this will reverse the state of the pulse. So instead of having uh, a short on session and then a long off session, um, we'll now have the pulse the other way around. So as you'll see from here, it'll stay on and blip off effectively. And it'll repeat that again for the amount of times that we've got it set there in the counter. Pretty simple. And as we finished, the output line comes on there to say that it's finished its cycle. Okay, so that's the end of uh, this guide to the uh, multipulse function on the programmable Rednet controller uh, that's included in the Mindfactory Reloaded mod. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and it didn't get too heavy, because I know programming logic can get uh, pretty involved. Obviously there's a lot more we can do with this. We've been looking at constant values and such like on here. We can change all of these to input-output lines uh, on different faces. We can also set them to different variables and such like that you can do with this controller. Uh, again, a little bit beyond the scope of this video at this point in time. Um, but hopefully that's given us a bit of an insight as to exactly what the multipulse function on this controller can do. Okay, this is me, Planet Wayne, signing off for now. Please leave a like or a comment below, it would be much appreciated. Uh, and until the next time, thanks a lot, and bye for now.